Hey everybody, this is a Blue. Well, my next video is about ethereal elemental magic. The idea here is that a lot of people want to cast Harry Potter type magic, but many of us know that we will never be able to take our hands and shoot out a fireball, right? But I was trying to think of a way where we could and the closest thing that I could come up with was ethereal elemental magic. Now, ethereal means non-corporeal energy, you know, which is spiritual energy. That is the basis of all our magic, okay? And we do have people that practice weather magic, where they are able to do an incantation, a spell, like to redirect a tornado away from a populous center. We have people that try to you know bring rain to a dry area so we do have a premise of working with the weather which is elemental in nature so what we have to do is create a ball a sphere a bolt of energy and try to give it the effects of an element um, such as lightning, electricity. So what I like to do is I'd put my two hands together like this and try to feel like where there's like energy pushing back and so I pull away and back. This is a process for me a building a ball of energy. And while I'm doing that I would then try to visualize it being like a little ball of lightning and with practice a lot of practice and attempts of doing this we should be able to create a ball of energy that has the effects of lightning but not be visual lightning and so we would then cast it out. I mean, you can, if you've done the law role playing, you can do the lightning strike, um, a ball, a bolt. Um, a few months ago, I did a video about using the spell arrow, where basically you're picturing an arrow, and that arrow is the um, ethereal form of your spell and then you can cast out that way you know you're trying to visualize it going to a specific spot a specific person okay so hopefully that makes some sense to you and then you know we practice with the different elements you cannot just say well I've done this with fire I can do this with ice no you have to the way I see it you have to do each one individually um, some of us um, would declare, declare us to be like a water witch, weather, fire, you know, pick an element and, you know, that's the way we are. You know, zodiac signs, they have the, each of the elementals. So then you would work with that one and try to get your effect. Um, this can be used in offensive and defensive manners. Now... Um, when you're first starting off with witchcraft, you learn to create a sphere of white energy around you. You know, put your hands at your heart, fingers above your heart, and push out to create a sphere of energy. Well, since we are all, we can create a sphere of energy, like I was talking about, we could thus create this and send it out to somebody who's needing protection. Let's say somebody is aggravating my friend Victoria. Um, I could then go and focus, try to create a white ball of light, even realize where Victoria lives, and send it out to protect her. And thus, uh, some of my energy would go then to Victoria and help protect her. Okay, positive. But I can do the opposite then. Let's say I know who is attacking Victoria. And so what I would do instead was I would picture a bolt, like an arrow bolt, a crossbow bolt, a black. It is 
darkness. It is absorbing energy. It is a void of energy. I would be creating that in my mind. I'd be taking my fingers like this and back and back and creating this bolt of darkness. Then using the spell arrow idea that I have, I would then send it out towards the attacker. Black would be the opposite of white. And so if that person had a sphere of white energy, it would penetrate that sphere and break it, making them weaker so that they cannot attack my friend Victoria. And then if the person that was attacking Victoria was stupid, then and didn't have any type of protections that black bolt would then hit here and that would weaken them um, directly and so that is the offensive defensive um, things about this and another idea that backs this concept of mine up is there's a lot of people that believe that they can do distance reiki you know sending healing energies you know, where they take their hands and they'll think of, I think it's green energy because green is growth. And they'll think that, you know, of the person and send it out. Well, same premise. Now, hmm. there, I've watched a lot of um, martial arts movies growing up. And there was one movie that I never forgot. Oh, I forgot the title. But anyway, um, where the master was teaching these four guys different uh, physical labors. And they worked on them and worked on them because they were told to. And then they realized uh, it enhanced their fighting skill in certain ways. And they were able to go beyond um, and do more amazing work and do it from a distance. So the advanced developed idea of this is, let's say we did a lot of work on water, okay? You know, water is soothing, water is emotional. And so I did a lot of water ball ethereal energy work. There would come a point in time where we become strong enough, gathering, focusing, and shaping our spiritual energies that we can actually start to affect it on a mundane level. So let's say I was working a lot with water and I go into a swimming pool. I'm surrounded by water. Maybe I can just take my hands out of the water and I can slightly adjust it or change it. And thus I would literally become a water witch idea. Now, we have to stay realistic and remember that we're not going to be able to create a tidal wave, but we might be able to see a little bit of a ripple across the water because we just put our hands like this. So that is my theory on ethereal elemental witchcraft. I would love to hear what you guys think about it, so please leave your comments down below, and everybody, take care. Be at peace.